Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Robin Armbrecht with Really Robin Stamps, and you are joining me for Paper Crafting Playdate. Today is January 20th, 2022, and this is episode 45. I'm so excited that you're here. I am thrilled to be back um, making things with paper, and I'm glad you're joining me today, specifically because we have a fun fold today, and it is called a center panel easel card. And even though it's got three words in the title, it's way easy. So let me show you what our project is going to look like. All right, give me a second and I'm going to turn around the camera. Hello, Miss Cindy. I'm glad you made it home. Okay, I'm going to lift this up just a little bit more because I'm going to get this camera right, right off the bat today. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you're doing today. If you're having a good day. All right, I'm going to find us. And then I have some cards to show you. very excited about some of this mail I have gotten. All right, let me find find us here. Hello, Judy. You are staying in and keeping warm. That is a good, good plan. It is cold today. Okay, there we go. Now let me just... Hello, Wendy. Hello, Rebecca. Okay, I'm almost there. Thank you for being patient with me here. Trying to make sure I do this the right way. Oh, for Pete's sake, where is it? There we go. All right, I got it. All right, so I have some um, happy fun mail that I've received to share with you. First of all, look at this gorgeous card. This is from my friend Cheryl. And I know she loves me because look how much ribbon she put on this card and six embellishments. I love it. She used some of the new stamp sets in the mini catalog and this great Hive um, 3D embossing folder. So that is very cool. And then I received this great monochromatic card from my friend Eve. Isn't that beautiful? So simple. It's great to have a bunch of cards like this made up so that you can just have them ready to go. You can plop a greeting on there based on whatever occasion you need. Hello, Sherry. Who else am I seeing here? Hello, Sarah. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Susan. Oh, gang's all here. All right, looks like it's freezing up a little bit, so just Give it a minute here. We'll see if it works out. All right, here's my first Valentine card that I've received. This is from Cindy. Thank you so much, Cindy. It's beautiful. I love it. Just love it. And then this card is from Wendy. Came all the way from the United Kingdom. Isn't that gorgeous? I love this card. So pretty. This is one of my favorite things to do to just kind of distress the edges. And I haven't done it for a while, so thanks for the reminder, Wendy. I need to do that again. All right, and then I received from um, Cheryl. She makes these for her customers every year, and I was blessed to get one. And it is a little easel card that is a sticky note holder and a calendar, a little flip flip calendar here. So cute. 
and it's thick, but you could mail this. It's a great, it's a great idea. And it's perfect because we're gonna do, like I said, a version of the easel cards today. And then Cheryl also sent along this cute ladybug card, which is just amazing, right? This punch. I don't have this ladybug punch yet, and I was kind of convinced I wasn't going to have to get it, but um, this card has turned me around and set me straight. I'm definitely going to order that because that ladybug is cute. Now, somebody tell me if you can see me because everything is all frozen for me. If you would just leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much for this happy mail. I just absolutely love it. Feel very blessed by it. I'm going to hang that up on my wall. All right, so today we're going to do center panel easel cards. And um, just as a reminder, an easel card is just a regular size card, but the front of the card is scored in half so that you can lift up the front of the card and it will tuck behind something raised on the inside and it'll be very nice for displaying. So um, if you haven't made just a regular easel card before, I have a whole video about easel cards and that was I think episode 30. So you can go back on YouTube and watch, watch how to make an easel card. And then on episode 31, we did these like over the top, you know, inside out easel cards, if you remember those. So we are gonna do a variation of that easel card today. All right, so here are the supplies that you need. Essentially, you need a half sheet of cardstock, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. That's gonna be your card base. And then you need a piece of cardstock that is three and a half by four and a quarter. And then you need a trimmed neutral piece. This is just kind of general, generally. Oh, let me put these away. Uh, th this is my January hostess code, by the way. I'm just gonna tuck that in here so you can just see it. And um, these are my freebies, you can pick any one of these with your celebration order this month. And a celebration order is um, $50, plus you get to pick out any of the freebie items that are in the celebration catalog with a $50 order. So now I can put those away. Hello, Carol. Great to see your name pop up. All right. Here's what we're gonna do with our half sheet of cardstock that has been scored. I'll just go ahead and uh, crease it so that you can see where the card is. So what happens on a center panel easel card is that we create a panel in the middle of the card and that little panel becomes an easel. So it's kind of like a miniature easel card. So what you need to do, figure out which side is your front of your cardstock, and you're going to cut the front of the card into three panels. So you're gonna have two very skinny panels on the outside. Hello, Jonna, and hello, Carol. And then you're gonna have a little bit wider one in the middle. So we're going to score, I'm sorry, we're going to cut one inch from the bottom of the card front to right in the middle of the card where that score line is. Okay, now I could flip this over because I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but I don't know if you've noticed when you cut cardstock, once you cut it, the blade kind of creates a front and a back. It's not a huge deal, but where the blade presses into the cardstock, it actually pushes the edge of the cardstock um, 
in the in the direction of the blade so it kind of like leaves just a tiny little lip again it's not a huge deal so i'm just going to move this over and i'm going to measure on this one inch mark so this paper cutter has uh, an inch and a half going this way and then the ruler going this way so it's kind of nice you can kind of measure from either side of the cutting line all right so I'm going to cut another inch so now I've got three panels these are each one inch and then this is three and a half inches okay and before we put the paper cutter away we have to turn it, we're gonna turn our card, and we wanna score this middle panel in half. So I'm just gonna fold these little one inch panels, and I'm gonna measure this, so this is four and a quarter, cause it's exactly the length of the card front, and half of that is two and one eighth. So I'm gonna measure at two and one eighth, and then I'm gonna take my scoring blade, and I'm just gonna make a score line in half. Okay, now we can put the paper cutter away. So here's what we have. Our card front looks like this. This is the little easel part. It's gonna fold towards the inside of the card and it's going to stand up. So let's do some decorating here and put together this first card. I wanted to play with this new stamp set for two reasons. One, it looks like it's going to keep me warm, right? And a nice ocean front. I know some of you live in Florida who are watching and um, just, you know, send some vitamin D up here because it is cold, cold, cold. So this is a great stamp set. It is just so easy. <laughs> Everything's right here. It's already like pretty much designed. So I thought we would just take some beautiful beachy colors and we're going to create a little scene with this ocean front stamp set. So I'm going to take pool party first because that's going to be the sky. Okay, and I'm going to ink my pool party. So because this is a photopolymer stamp set and the images have so much surface area, I'm using my paper um, piecing mat because it's going to give a little bit of give under those stamps and allow that ink to just soak all the way through. All right, so there's our gorgeous sky. Now I'm going to take Bermuda Bay for our watercolor here. Take the water image and ink that up. And I'm just going to overlap a tiny little bit with the sky. Isn't that pretty? I could stop right there. Just put those two colors together. And then there's this little sand piece. So let's add that. And of course we have to use the color Sahara sand. I mean, can't get any easier than that, right? Okay, so let's put our little sand right here. Boom, right up against the water. And then there's these great little stones. We're gonna go ahead and do those too. Can you guess what color I'm going to use? <laughs> what color has stone in it? How about gray granite? going to plop some stones right there. This card practically makes itself. I mean, you're really just a facilitator of uh, picking the ink colors. It can't really get any easier. So now I'm going to come back and just put some accents in with my dark early espresso. So we've got these beautiful little um, 
I'm going to call them weeds, but they're not. There's some kind of, you know, beachy plant, and then there's some grass. I guess it's some kind of grass, right? Um, so I'm going to just add a couple of those to give some perspective. And then we'll put a couple over here too. So now we've got a little grass down there. How fun is that? Easy, right? This is my favorite, favorite way to stamp. I could just really do that all day long. All right, I'm gonna take this larger stone and while I have my ink pads out, I should have done that just a second ago, I'm going to stamp one of these larger ones for the inside of the card. And you'll see why in just a minute. All right, so while we let that ink just dry a little bit, sea oats. Lisa thinks they're sea oats. You, I mean, you could literally tell me that those are anything and I would, <laughs> I would believe you. I'm gonna mount this on this piece of pool party so it'll coordinate. And again, this piece is three and a half by four and one fourth. Okay, let's go back to our card so I can show you what this center panel easel is gonna do. So what you're going to do with this card is you're going to adhere these two panels completely down to the inside of the card. And then we're going to pop something out on the inside and it's gonna lift up this piece so it'll be displayed. So I actually want to stamp on these. So before I go ahead and put that together, I'm going to very quickly just kind of stamp this little splatter right here just to create a little sandy background on the edge. So the reason that easel cards are really fun and special is because there's kind of extra, um, there's an extra display factor to them because they stand up really nicely. So it's, it's a great opportunity to add a couple extra greetings um, to your to your message and then the, all of those greetings will get to be displayed at the same time, which is kind of cool. So now that I've decorated those, we're going to attach them. So I'm gonna just lay that and make sure that my corners are all lined up. like that. All right, so this is going to be here on the front. But in order for it to be lifted up and displayed, we can only attach it to this bottom piece right here. So I'm going to put adhesive down here like that. And then just make sure I'm lining it up with the top and the bottom. Like that. All right, so we're just about done here. We're gonna add a greeting. And I liked kind of the font of this new stamp set called Happy and Heartfelt. And I liked the sentiment that says, all day, your way. And I am not even gonna layer another piece. I'm just gonna put that right in our sky. Like that. Okay. But we have to have one little embellishment at least. So I'm gonna put just a little bit 
of this linen thread because it looks kind of beachy. Just make a tiny little Okay, so to make this work, you have to have something inside that's going to um, hold the card open so it can be displayed. So you have to pick a, you know, some kind of greeting on a label or some kind of punch or die cut or something, a strip that will stand up with the dimensional so that the front of the card will tuck behind it. So I'm going to use this little um, extra boulder here. And we'll pop that up with the dimensional. And I'm gonna stick that. So you want your, um, depending on how tall you want this to stand, you have to think about that before you put it down. So generally about an inch to an inch and a half from the bottom of the card is a great place to put that piece so it'll stand like that. And then you've got this great space here that you can put a secondary greeting that kind of coordinates with the front and then you still have room to put your main message under here. So I really like that a lot. So I'm gonna do no matter what so I'm kind of thinking this would be like a birthday card, right? And sending it to somebody so they can do what they want on their birthday, no matter what, right? That's what you should get to do on your birthday. Okay, so basically you've just got your card base and then you've got a layer that is the same size as this center panel and then you've got whatever it's going to take to decorate right super super easy all right so we're going to step it up a little bit with our next one but first we have to put some of these on have you guys seen these oh my goodness i can tell you that these embellishments are so much fun. I don't think I've seen anything quite so different in all my years as a demonstrator. So in the new mini catalog, you can get a set of embellishments that look like pebbles and they're kind of in those natural earth tones. And then there's also a package that look, are called faux sea glass shapes and they they literally look like sea glass. It's just gorgeous. So I couldn't barely decide what I wanted to put on here, but I'm going to just go ahead and do the pebbles since that's kind of what I've got down here. So let's put a couple of these over here. Just make it look kind of realistic. There we go. Very simple, right? You could step this up a million ways, but I'm gonna start very simple and maybe I'm gonna stay simple, I don't know. Okay, what do you think about that? Are you with me? Let's step it up a little bit. And let's make another one. So I've been playing a little bit with um, this suite of products. Let me just show you before I get ahead of myself. Oceanfront is the stamp set that I first used and it is on page 39 
of the mini catalog. There we go. And what I'm going to show you now, um, I'm gonna use little bits from this piece right here, but this suite all coordinates together. So it's kind of nice when you get um, two sets of dies and two stamp sets that all go together, you can really do a lot with it. So, um, but I'm gonna show you a very simple um, card. I tend to be more of a simple stamper most of the time. I do love to color and this is just beautiful colored in, but sometimes I don't want to color in, right? So I'm going to take some navy blue, Night of Navy ink, and I'm going to stamp this flower in navy. And I'm going to ink it upside down like this because when you have a larger image than your ink pad, a lot of times it's it's not impossible, you can do this still, but you tend to have a little bit more control if you just reverse the process. So I'm going to stamp that. Hello Kay, how are you today? Okay. This technique that I'm going to show you is really great when you stamp with a darker ink color like um, any of the the rich, um, the regal colors or navy or Mary Merlot, anything dark like that where the, the ink has some intensity to it. You can go back in and you can just take a, your blender pen and this is just like a blank clear inked marker. And while the, the ink is drying, you can just pick up the ink from around the image and then just give it a little just kind of rub it around it's like you are having a marker but you're you're using the the ink in the from the image that you stamped this particular image is so easy to color because all of the shading is done for you, so you really just have to make it darker where there's already shading and lighter where there's not. So it's it's very, very easy. So I'm just kind of making a monochromatic card. That's why I'm just making my flowers all blue. And since it's January in the Midwest right now, I, there are no flowers. And if there were, they would be blue because they'd be cold. So I felt that was kind of appropriate. So you see you get what I'm doing there? All right, so I already finished one, so you wouldn't have to watch me do the whole thing. And when I completely finished it, I ran it through the Tasteful Textile 3D embossing folder, which makes it look kind of like watercolor paper or linen. And then it just gave it a nice little texture like that. So this is gonna be your focal point. So let's put this card together too. I've already cut it and then I did it the exact same way as the first one. This is crumb cake. And then here's my center fold. So this time, instead of just leaving these um, blank, I thought it would be fun to add some coordinating cardstock. So I, I got out Misty Moonlight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my same image and I'm just going to stamp that again. And I need some scratch paper here. Just 
just to add a little more interest to that before I add it to the front of the card. So this is Misty Moonlight and I stamped Night of Navy on that. And I'm just gonna glue that one inch strip right on top of what I just glued down from the card panel. So this is how you can start to step up the basic version. Okay, so here is our front card panel. So we're going to only put adhesive on the bottom. And then we're going to attach that. Isn't that pretty? Now, instead of leaving it blank on the inside, I cut another trimmed piece of basic white similar to this, and we'll put that on the inside so that you can write on it. And now let's just, let's just decorate it a little bit and make it kind of special. So I took some of the dies that came with these stamp sets. I'll just show you again. So there's these great little pieces. Maybe they were from here. There they are. I've got all these nice little leaf um, branches, little vines, little flowers. So I just did a bunch of them in navy and the misty moonlight so that we could um, make this just a little bit a little bit extra by adding some layers to it. So I'm going to stamp a greeting on here. Like that. I'll just show you where I'm going then I'm going to show you the finished one. So what's nice about the center panel card is because of how it lifts, lifts up, you can um, extend past this panel. So you can put things that are sticking out and it won't affect how the card, you know, as long as you stay within the confines of the four in a fourth by five and a half, um, it'll be really pretty. So. My idea was to stick some little leaves over here and put some little flowers on there. And then I've got this great little greeting to go on the inside too. But let me show you the finished one. So you can see. Like that. So it's just a little bit, so we've got, you know, just the basic way to make this. And then by adding a few more layers um, and just a couple extra little steps like the embossing folder and the die cuts here, you can make it a little bit stepped up. I love blue monochromatic cards. What about you? There's something just so beautiful and bright and I don't know it's a good color classic maybe that's what I'm looking for it's just classic okay so instead of putting cardstock here in a coordinating color you can always put designer series paper so here's another one made with the same suite um, I use these butterflies here and I use some of the hearth and home paper I added in um, just some extra little fancy dies so that it would just kind of be a little bit, you know, a little bit stepped up as well. So there is another version. All right, you guys have a, a favorite so far? Okay, so what I wanted to do next was show you how 
you can add even more designer series paper on here, but still keep it very, very easy. Okay, so let's just put these down for just a second. And let's bring in one of our celebration freebies, our sunshine and rainbows paper. Does anybody need any vitamin D? Like get your face close, you know, close to your screen right now. And I'll just give you a little shot of vitamin D with this paper because it's so happy. There you go. Look at these fawn colors. I'm just showing you one side too. So cute. And here's all the beautiful little patterns on the other side. I love this paper. Remember, this is a free item you can get in January and February. All right, so let's make another one. And let's use designer series paper across the front. So here's my card front. Now you can do this two ways. You can go ahead and cut these strips and glue them on, but you can also just glue the whole thing onto your card base, which is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna cut it all at the same time. So I'm gonna add that cardstock to the front of my card base, get it lined up. And then I'll cut my inch panels. and we'll score. Not cut, we'll score. Okay, you see how easy this comes together? Now there's no um, real hard and fast rule for how wide your panels need to be. I just picked one inch because that was an easy number, but if you wanted your center panel to be wider or narrower, you most certainly could adjust these measurements. There's no, um, you know, there's no hard and fast rule. So now I'm just gonna bend that like that. Right? Okay, so let's use our rainbow of happiness. So one of the features of this paper is that some of the dies will cut out um, some of the things in the paper. So you've got this little rainbow that'll cut out these cute little rainbows. How awesome is that? And then I've already told you this cloud punch is a must have. You absolutely have to purchase the cloud punch. I'm just saying it's it's just the best thing that's out right now. Look how fun this um, negative is where I cut this out. This I'm saving this because this could just go on a nice bright color. It'd be really cute to save. All right, so we're gonna cut out some clouds because the cloud punch works on this designer series paper too. can find my scissors. There we go. So I already did a couple, so I'm just going to get rid of some of that extra there so I can reach reach these. So I'm going to punch out 3 of these. Pat's going to bring me some vitamin C. I would appreciate that. I need it. So 
look at that cute little rainbow cloud. And we're going to do one more over here. Let's see, did I do a sunshine one? Okay. All right, so I already cut out a scalloped circle in Pool Party and then a white scallop because I wanted to put my rainbow on there and keep it pretty easy. But before I do that, I just want to add a little color to the white, make it more of a blue sky. And so I'm going to take some Pool Party and just Give it a little, little, little sponging brushing. Like that. And we'll just get our little rainbow put together. I think this little rainbow um, bundle in this paper is just coming at the, just the right time of year, like it seems kind of springy and it, it is springy, but I'm ready for it. It's making me happy. Okay, so there's the rainbow. I have sticky fingers here. <laughs> okay. And we'll put some clouds on there. We're going to stamp our greeting on one of the clouds. And then we'll layer these. trouble keeping my dimensionals right in front of me today. I don't know why, but they keep disappearing. So I'm going to pop up the one that has the greeting. And again, I'm going to make this go off of the um, panel so that it'll kind of hang over here a little bit. So I'm going to put that one popped up. And then this one we'll just tuck underneath like that. So this di this die set that goes with the rainbows has four tiny little clouds. And I was cutting out a bunch of stuff recently and I went ahead and just plopped those clouds onto my white paper because they were, they were little and I had so much room. So now I've got this whole little container of tiny clouds to use and it's it's quite exciting. So I'm gonna just tuck a little white cloud in there. Like that. All right, so we'll attach that. Now, so we only wanna attach it to the bottom like that. So we'll put glue on just half of, half of that. Let that set. And then our third cloud's going to be what pops up on the inside. I'm so sorry, I cannot read any of your comments. My, um, they're not showing up on my screen today. It's very, 
very delayed for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I'm gonna kind of just space these like that. Kind of in the middle there. And then we're gonna add just a couple more little white ones. Because I have so many cut out. All right. This one's pretty cute. <laughs> because of the rainbows, not because of anything I done, but like I it is so cute. So let's take another greeting so that we can finish it off. So a little something to brighten your day. You make me happy. And then we just need to add a little bit of embellishment. So I'm going to use the new iridescent rhinestones because they also look like rainbows. They're so cute. And let's put some of those on front. Like that. And there you go. Now look at this one. This is my practice one. So this one, I did cut my um, designer series paper into strips first and attached it separately so that I could make this whole panel come up, right? But on this one, I attached the paper first and so it had to go, um, it had to bend with with the um, easel part. So you've got options here, depending on how you want your finished um, easel to pop up. So using the designer series paper makes this really easy as well. So I've got a couple more to show you. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you. Hey, Wanda. Very, very cheerful. I agree. That's a great, great set. So I wanted to play with this paper called um, On the Horizon, I believe. New Horizons. And it's got all these great little scenes on them. And then just kind of some watercolor, you know, um, very abstract looking pieces. And it kind of looks at first glance like you have to use the whole six by six sheet to get the idea of a landscape, but you really don't. Um, I took this one right here and I cut this into my four and a half by five, four and a quarter by five and a half to cover my card front. And I'll show you how that one turned out. So this is, this is fun paper too. And so I just made sure I cut it so it would lay across the um, the front of the card in order. And then I went ahead and stamped on it directly onto the designer series paper. I came up with that one. And then I did the same thing with the tulip paper, which that's not what it's called. Flowering fields, I believe it's called. Use the tulip punch to create, to create that one. So really, it, once you, you know, once you get started with an idea, just kind of pull out your papers, pull out your stamp sets, think of things that would make little scenes or little focal points, because it's, it's nice. This is like a miniature little card size here, this three and a half by four and a fourth. So you can kind of just, you know, make a smaller little focal point. And then you've got 
a really nice, you know, it's just a really nice little design space. Now you can do, so all of these cards, if you've noticed, these are um, landscape cards or horizontal cards. And I feel like that is kind of the best, the best way for this size card to make um, the center panel because you just, you've got a lot of stability on the card when it is displayed. And then you've got this nice kind of nice rectangular surface to like design on, but you can flip it. So I did it as a portrait size card. I still did one inch on the side. And so that left two and a fourth down the middle and that would stand up then like that. So it's a little bit different. Um, like I said, I feel like it's maybe not, depending, maybe it, it just needs, you know, this is the only one I tried. Point is, it, it works to do it in a different direction. You just maybe have to get a little bit more creative on how you decorate something that is so long. But then I was thinking about Easter cards and how you could um, really easily make like a cross if you did a, a tall one like this, then that would be kind of cool. Okay, I have one more to show you today. Let's just sit those over there for a second. So coming in February, um, Stampin' Up! is offering some new items. And this is a bundle that's called All Together. It's a limited time bundle, so it will um, just be around for the spring from February to May and it has a stamp set and a set of dies. So you can bundle those together or get them separately. There's a pack of paper called All Together and it's great black and white patterns. Lots and lots of different choices there. So that's fun, this paper's great to color on. And then the really cool thing, and this will actually go into the new catalog um, that starts May 1st, is there are going to be a whole set of 10 different Natural Tones Stampin' Blends markers that are gonna make it so much easier to um, color different skin tones. It's, it's, I'm so excited that we have this. Um, as a, something to offer. So there are five different um, bundles of color and they come in a set of two and they're different than the regular blends because they don't, it's not like a light and the dark of the same color. These are two different colors that will blend together to make different, you know, to make a different skin tone. So you can use them together, you can use the pairs together, but it's going to give you a lot of nice, beautiful, natural tones to use. So I wanted to just do uh, one last card with this new stamp set because I love the timely, the timely messages. So I've already done this and I wanted to show you if you don't want to fill up this whole one inch little strip on the edge, you can just trim down your designer series paper. And so you'll see a little edge of your, you know, card base. And so um, instead of kind of a little bit different than what we've done before, I'm gonna add a little bit of this designer series paper on the front as well. And I just trimmed it a little bit so I would still see that Bermuda Bay card base. And then I went ahead and I used the blends and I played with, I mean, I just played with them one time so far and colored some of the hands making the heart. So I'm going to attach that right at the top here so it'll stand up when my card is displayed and I thought this was a really neat piece in here so I thought that would be fun to stamp around these hands like that and 
And then there's just great greetings in here. Love changes everything. Every act of kindness changes the world. We'll get through this together. You matter to me. And so I picked one of those and put it on a little label, but I thought it would be fun to put another heart here. And then we'll stick that up there, just a little pop of color like that. So when this displays, then you're going to get that cute little hand heart there. And so for the inside, I just made, I put one of the other greetings on a simple little flag and we'll put that down here. Like that. There you go. We've got the inside greeting there as well. Get a little adhesive here. There we go. All right. Lots of options for the center panel easel card. I sure hope you enjoyed these projects today. Let's bring them back out. Let me know if you've made one before. And if it's been a while, I'm gonna challenge you to make one again and see what, see what you come up with. If you're in the Robin's really super, well, gosh, what's it called? Robin's really super stampers group. That's it. Um, go ahead and uh, make some and uh, give us a share and post so that we can see what you have come up with. We'd love, love to see what you will do with this template idea. The patterns and the directions will be on my blog as always. So I hope that you, oh my goodness, I forgot to show you two more samples. Oh, Robin, look at this one. I hope that you do get a chance to, <laughs> to make these. And then I did one for Valentine's Day. There we go. All right, rest of the afternoon, I'm just going to be sitting here looking at these fun little cards here, taking some pictures and um, they'll, all the samples will be on my blog. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, guys, for watching. I appreciate um, all your comments and your hearts and your love and your likes and all that good stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.